So let's continue our discussion of the some of the basics needed in user prog. Um, so the virtual address space, as we said, is mapped to physical address space through a page table, which is a per process table. So for now, to keep things simple, I'm just going to think of my four uh, pages that the code is made up of, one page that's the heap is made up of, and the one page that the user stack is made up user stack is made up of as simply uh, locations in my page table. Let's just call this the zeroth location, though it's really not the zeroth location. This corresponds to the first page of my code, code one, let's say. Uh, so, so what we will see here is an entry that might look something like this. The entry might say here that it is a map to a, a physical frame number of 472. I'm just making this up. So 472 might be a page somewhere here. This is 472. I intentionally just picked, I, I arbitrarily picked some location. Maybe this is the 472 page where it is located, which means that when the program is loaded into memory, this is where this guy is going to be located in physical memory. Uh, the second one, uh, let's just for, for argument purposes, say that the second page, which is this guy, which is C2 code, the second page in code two, let's say is mapped to uh, 500. So 500 might be somewhere here and 500 now has all the information. It has the code that corresponds to this page here, right here. And, and let's use, let's uh, skip these other two here and uh, let's take uh, another one here so that's 0 1 2 and 3 are gone so 0 1 2 and 3 so 4 here which corresponds to the heaps only segment in the heap corresponds to let's say some location in in here and maybe it's at location let's say 685 i'm just making these numbers up so 685 has the has this has the heap and may I'm just make saying that the heap is just one page here so the one page of the heap is sitting here and let's complete this picture and we have our stack which is uh, which is at location let's say down here uh, I just uh, I'm, I'm saying that it is going to be at some location I didn't mean to put that now uh, whatever this location is uh, which which in our case typically is um, is the is the frame page number which is zero x in this case would have been bff f uh, with another f uh, which is the page number which is the index and this guy let's say is mapped to uh, uh, let's make it up as something like 555 so 555 is somewhere here and this is where the stack frame is which is my stack frame here okay so, so what's really happening is every time we a program runs, all the addresses that a program generates are virtual addresses, but they have to be mapped to physical addresses because they are stored in memory. Now, one of the things that we will see later on, but not right now, is uh, is it's possible for a programmer for for an operating system to not load all the pages. So let's say this code. Program, the code is pretty big. So maybe what it needs is just one code page. So what it might have is the P bit here might be a present, but this one might also be a present. This is present and this is present, but maybe let's take this guy here, which is two might actually be absent, which means that it's not in the physical memory, but so it means that it's not mapped anywhere which means that it's still on the disk. And this is what uh, most operating systems do so that they do what is uh, lazy loading. They only load what is needed. That way they're not filling up memory with all the pages that a program might ever access, but only use the pages that a program has real need for. So let's, um, let's move on to 
another concept that we need to understand um, in, in, in doing user prog. So the operating system maintains per process a process control block. We've seen this before in when we are working on, on Yash. Uh, so the process control block is a data structure that keeps track of a process. Well, in, in Pintos, a process is, we'll use the word process and thread interchangeably, uh, but uh, the, there is a difference in that um, the, the operating system looks at it as a thread, but the user thinks of them as processes. So every process is, has a thread associated with it. So every user process has a kernel thread associated with it. So therefore in Pintos, we don't think of this as a PCB, but we think of it as the thread control block. And in Pintos, this is defined as a struct thread, which by the way is, uh, is in the, under threads folder thread dot h file and this struct thread will have a bunch of fields in it uh, let's actually look at the actual thread structure in in pintos um, here is the thread structure so let me actually open um, my threads thread dot h and um, let's quit make this bigger and let's go down here and we'll see how this works in just a second but here is a thread structure and right now as the picture here shows the thread structure has has this definition as of now so if we look at the thread structure what it has inside it is a thread id which is similar to a PID or this is the thread ID which uh, which is the process identifier which we've been calling as PID all along. Um, there's a status and the status as we will see uh, is the we can the, uh, the life cycle of a thread uh, in Pintos goes through uh, four um, four states and we'll look at the state diagram in just a second. Um, we we'll give a name for debugging purposes. The stack where um, the saved stack pointer, we'll see where we need that. A priority for this is this particular thread and all the threads in our system are part of a linked list and the linked list is um, we use um, this notion of a list data structure, um, the list data structure that's built into Pintos. Um, the way it works is, uh, is uh, uh, any, any list that you're a part of you will have a corresponding list element inside it that will be your hook to reside in a particular um, a particular uh, list that's your hook into a list so if you are let's say in an all all threads list then what will happen is your let's say these are all the threads in our system so the all threads list will will have a mechanism by which the uh, the all element which is common to all of them this is called the all element uh, this this field will give us a way to tie into that all list threads and we'll see an example of the list data structure later on um, by the way these if a thread can, thread can be in a, uh, the thread uh, 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 Thread control block can be in multiple lists. Uh, here is another list. Um, this element, list element, we use this for synchronization. Uh, we'll see synchronization issues uh, where, where if you're waiting on some event and then that event has a list of waiters, all the waiters which are lists, uh, which are a set of threads, they all form a linked list. So this, this 
hook will be your way of residing in that list. Um, this is where our page directory is. This is our page table. Uh, we call it a page directory as uh, because it's really implemented as a as a two level um, a page table. Um, we'll discuss that later on. So so let's take a look at what um, what the thread uh, life cycle looks like. Uh, so so every thread um, goes through this life cycle. Uh, let's let's actually look at the life cycle here. Oops. So all threads enter the system um, when they get created. So this is a thread create. When you enter the system, you start in a ready state. You get scheduled. Uh, so when you're in the when you enter the system, you you enter uh, the ready state, and all threads are in the in this big list called the all threads list. Um, and once you're scheduled, you go into a running state, and there's only one thread that is in a running state. And there are many threads here in this state. And as you're running, if you voluntarily give up the processor by doing a thread yield, you go back to a ready state. Um, and in some cases, uh, you might have a timer go off because it's a time slice expiry, then you go into a ready state also. If you do a blocking call like IO or on an event, if you block on an IO or an event, then you go into a blocked state. And if you're in a blocked state and the event or IO completes, um, IO complete or event that you're waiting for, a condition that you're waiting for, is uh, no longer uh, is is has occurred then you go back into the ready state again when you call thread exit you leave and go into this into this temporary state called dying and the idea here is that the uh, you stay in this state until a parent reaps your exit status that is it gathers your exit